Hi once again. Uh, this is episode number 812. 812. It sounds weird saying 812. 812, just to keep the numbers accurate. And the topic today is all about respect. And the topic the title is um, Do you respect your partner? Or did you respect your partner? Pre-asked relationship. And do you respect yourself? Because it's going to be a double-edged sword. So I hope you're going to stay tuned. This is going to be a fun talk. At least I hope it's going to be a fun talk. We'll see what happens. These are never planned or scripted. Hi, Zena. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Before I, before I get into the topic, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I'm on episode number 812, because that might make sense. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best... I'm, I am... Let me put it in the right order. I am an inspirational speaker, relationship and, relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business, and also the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, who hope you have better relationships with yourself and each other. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work with women and also why I do these talks that started over two and a half years ago, more than that now, almost three, wow. And the title of those as an overarching title is Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart, because they're messages from my heart to yours. And so we're at episode number 812 today. And the topic today is about respect, particularly if you respect or respected your partner and do you respect yourself. As I say, because. Now, let me just start over and say, let's jump in. So, if you have any questions, you want to interact, you've got any thoughts, please put them below and respond if they show up in the broadcast whilst I'm going. If you're watching this on YouTube, that won't make any sense because this is a Facebook Live first that went on to YouTube later, YouTube later on. I'll give you the links for those at the back end of the broadcast. I made some other links for you as well. So, respect. As, um, as a friend of mine said today, she was looking at how relationships are no longer sort of respect-based. They're more about what you can get versus what you can give and how you can share. And I was talking about respect as a perspective because for a lot of people, respect would only show up if you stop being about what I can get. And if you're in a relationship to see what you can get out of it, without any concern for your partner or what you can contribute to it, you're missing the boat. So respect is a cornerstone of that, as a simple, I mean, I'm using it as a simple title, but reality is a lot more besides that. Respect is really the um, the spearhead it's the tip of the spear so to speak for things like appreciation love trust faith honesty communication um, integrity understanding acceptance etc etc so respect is at the top of that so all these things I'm talking about below that as part of the conversation too I just don't want to list them all in the title or in this talk but let me play with respect initially because there's two extremes of this in relationship. One of them is that respect you, you don't respect your partner, but you respect yourself, which is unusual because most people who don't respect other people also don't respect themselves, but that's a, that's a third option. <laughs> okay, four options. <laughs> they just download it's like bang, 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 bang. Okay, so one paradigm is you don't care about the other person, but you care about yourself, or you don't respect the other person, but you respect yourself. The inverse of that is you respect your, per your partner and sacrifice yourself for them because you don't respect yourself. There's a lot more to that as well. The other two options are that you don't respect your partner, you don't respect yourself, obviously. And then the obvious last one is you do respect your partner and you do respect yourself. The last option probably won't need, you probably won't need to watch this broadcast because you already get what this is about. Because it is about mutual respect. But I'm going to get from the disrespecting part to the respecting piece in a way that makes sense. You can actually change if you're stuck in the former, not the latter. Make sense? So... When you respect your partner more than yourself, and I've done that myself, so I know how painful it is, I've been in that, that, that boat, so to speak. There's been paradigms or there's been challenges in relationships where I would sacrifice myself for my partner. And it, was, it came out of the place of, misguidedly came out of the place of thinking like I was serving my partner and respecting them, so I had to put myself second to their needs. If you've ever been in a relationship like that, you understand what I mean. Where you put your needs secondary to your partner because they were more important than you in some way in here. Now, this is a whole convoluted thing, and I've lived this, so I know how it feels, where basically I would be in a relationship hoping to get something back, almost being like Oliver in, in, in um, um, Oliver Twist, like, can I have some more, sir, sort of thing. Like, once you almost get morsels from the table of your partnership, when you're respecting your partner much more than you're respecting yourself, and it's out of balance. And I'm all about having healthy, balanced relationship and equality, too. So that one doesn't work. And I proved to myself more than once it doesn't work. So hopefully you've understood that one too. On the flip side, which is more for 
<laughs> amongst you out there watching this. When you respect yourself more than you respect your partner, which is always an interesting thing because if you respect yourself, why would you be with somebody you don't respect? That's a more philosophical question because people still do that where they're basically not even bothering to give to their partner and say, I've been in relationships with women who were on the other side of that because they didn't respect me, or at least they didn't, um, they didn't express, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Respect for me, but I respected it for them. It was one that wasn't two-way street. So once as much they didn't respect, but they just, they just didn't show it. So maybe, maybe, and maybe, and hmm. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I didn't actually experience it because I didn't receive it. That's a whole other conversation about do we receive respect? And I might get into that too because I'm realizing I own that I own the one for myself. So presuming you have not been in the boat where you have respected yourself but not the other person, because most people who are like that don't watch my broadcast. To be honest, they're they're so self-interested. This wouldn't help them because they have no desire to be open to learn to grow or any of that stuff. So let's get into the other ones. Or let's get the one where you don't respect yourself and don't respect your partner. This is the more likely one when you don't respect yourself or res respect your partner because it's kind of the sense that if you don't respect yourself, why would you bother getting a better relationship? You don't respect your partner because you don't have respect for yourself. They are tied together in so many ways. And the thing is that we play this game somehow of um, making do. You know, when, when, when they say, you know, should, you should find someone special and settle down and get married, settle and down are both negative terms in my book because they're both lower. And when you do that settling down, the respect is kind of gone. You're not respecting yourself, you're not respecting your partner. So these are different aspects of the paradigm that will be lacking if you're doing one of these. So I'm gonna to speak to the two that I'm most relevant to, which is not respecting yourself, but respecting your partner over that, or as I put in a, sub, a, um, a PS, that maybe you don't feel the respect from the other person. They may be respecting you, but you're not getting it because you don't respect yourself. I'll tie that one together in a moment. Or you're in a place where you don't even care to respect yourself or your partner because you don't feel you deserve any more than that. So these two things are going on. And I think they tie together. Let me see. Let me talk about self-respect because that's the cornerstone of both of those. How do I want to approach it? Self-respect is a thing that is, it's not usually a default, it's something we learn. And sometimes we don't learn it the right way because maybe we've been in situations where we were punished or diminished or talked down to or abused or hurt in some way by somebody else that made us feel less respectful for ourselves. Being in a relationship with that person, as I mentioned, who doesn't respect you, will tend to remove your own respect for yourself because if you respected yourself, you'd, you would remove yourself from that relationship, pure and simple. The trap, though, is that somehow we feel we have a duty to perform, which is not actually true. We feel like we must stay because of something we made an agreement to, and it's not functional. The real paradigm, hi Kathleen, nice to see you in my broadcast, um, is to really stay true to yourself, you know, to thine own self be true, as, the, as the, uh, the bard would say. But this is the thing, when you are true to yourself, that's where respect is born, self-respect. And again, when you respect yourself, then you'll choose better for yourself being in relationship or being single. Well, you won't be in relationship unless you're being respected, ideally. Just, I'm just double checking my, my what, it's like I'm proofreading what I said, <laughs> or proof listening to what I said. Yeah, that's true. So staying true to yourself is the foundational piece of self-respect. And again, it is, when you talk about respect for yourself and other people, it is the, the, um, the, tip of the, the tip of the spear, the point of the spear, that is the, opening for all the other self-supportive practices that I talked about many times. Self-love, self-appreciation, self-respect, self-honesty, self-trust, self-integrity, self-support, self, all these different things. So there's a lot of them. So using the term of understanding respect as a tool and as a gauge to know that you are actually in the right place, is how you can tell if you're gonna be in the right relationship a lot. In fact, you can be you can be a barometer, so to speak, because if you get into meet with somebody and you're going out with them and they don't respect you, and, and here's some of the clues, by the way, if they're not respecting you. When you meet somebody through a dating app, through a referral, through a connection, or somebody you know as a friend and you start dating, if they don't keep their agreements with you, it's an indication they may not respect you. If they don't make time for you, they may not have respect for you. Now, these also have other sides because they may not make agreements with you because they have a bad habit of making agreements they can't keep. That may not be about you, but it, well, it's not about you, it's about them. 
But if they don't make time for you, maybe because they're a workaholic, in which case, do you want to be in a relationship with a workaholic? These are all clues that will give you guidance as to whether or not you want to be in, because when you respect yourself, you generally make better choices in your partnerships, in all things in your life. But particularly in relationships, you raise the bar and you raise the standard of the choices you make in partnership. Other indications that, that you're not being respected is your partner may be, um, what's the word looking for? I want to say sleeping around, it's not, you may not be at that point, but it's dating other people and not telling you. So they're being dishonest. Because honesty is another component of being respectful. And if they're not willing to tell you the truth, they may not be respecting you. Now, they might be telling you the truth that they are dating other people and they don't care about it and you're not feeling respected that way. So it can work both ways on that side. But the piece I want to make clear about is Well, the question I want to ask you is, this is better, is what are your standards? What is it that you actually um, choose to make important enough for you to say no to something or say yes to something? It's kind of borderlines on the whole thing of the red flags and green flags, the things I've talked about many times, it's in my book, by the way, is having the standing that the, the, the deal breakers that you have and respect I hope is a cornerstone or a component within your own self-regard and your own um, requirements so they don't have a red flag on that and you can actually get what you want. The, this dance of relationship is an interesting place to play because it will tend to bring up all your stuff um, if you do it right. <laughs> if you do it wrong then maybe it doesn't. No, it's not. that's interesting that's backwards. But the reality is when you do hold relationship to high regard and you choose to invest in a relationship full on and you make a deep commitment to that relationship then what's going to happen is all your stuff's going to come up. doesn't mean you should choose bad people. does not mean that. In fact, when you choose the best people, in quotes, the most respectable, respectful, and caring people you want to be with, person or person you want to be with, stuff's still going to come up. But the good news is when you be with somebody who's like that, they hold the space for you to work through it. They don't judge it or offer disdain or, or blame you for anything and walk away. They'll be there for you. That's, again, a part of the respect. That sense of respect creates a framework as well to make relationships much more stable. When you have mutual respect, it puts a um, it puts a frame around things that makes things more structured and makes them more effective. And if you're in a relationship where that's good, that's some reason some is coming up. <laughs> when you're in a relationship, that's commitment is a monogamous commitment. The way you want to be in a healthy relationship with somebody else, having that framework is healthy because it creates a structure in which you can play. Now. I don't mean rigidity, by the way. I mean a framework where you have agreements that work for both of you and you can play and have fun and be free in that space. What I was talking about earlier is that there are people who like to be in very loose relationships that have no boundaries, no framing, no structure. They're not generally monogamous, just to be clear. So if that's your choice, that's okay. But realize what you're getting into may be losing some of those qualities you really want to have. And I'm not judging either way because for those people, for, for those people that polyamory works, that's great. It's not my, not my teaching, it's not my work, it's not my focus, it's not my, my preference either. So just to be clear. But if monogamy is your focus, which is what I talk about, then having clarity of what it is you want to have in partnership and what you're willing to say yes to and what you're very clear about what you'll say no to is a vital cornerstone of making your choices healthy. I'm sort of realizing going in another part. Let me see if I want to go back. Um... No, that's for another time. Okay, so getting back to the respect piece. Respect piece. Some of the things you can do for yourself, just to talk about how you can create respect in yourself, because you can you earn it within yourself, from yourself. It's not about other people, by the way. I, did a, I posted a meme earlier today about that, about how um, other people's opinions have nothing to do with you. That's actually, um, there's f several quotes about that. But the thing about it is when you want to build respect for yourself, then you need to do things that help you build respect for yourself, which means, for example, I mentioned earlier about agreement keeping as a piece. When you keep your own agreements, your self-respect raises, rises, lifts, improves, etc. When you keep your agreements with yourself and you make agreements that, you're worth, that are worth keeping and you make those important enough and it's what you're doing is you're valuing yourself, you're valuing your word, which generates self-respect. This is actually a component I talked about before about self-trust and integrity, which is all tied together. So let me tell you about this. So self-trust, integrity, self-respect all come together under the same place which is you basically trust yourself well self-trust is trust yes but you trust yourself by doing what you say and saying what you do which also means you can say no to things as well part of this agreement keeping thing i've talked about this before 
this is multiple pieces of agreement keeping and one of those things about agreement keeping is you say no so you have to worry about it so if you say no to all your agreements not so good but if you say no to making too many agreements that can be a step in the right direction to put you back on level field so you can start respecting yourself and again you can't just say i respect myself and it's done it's practice with several skills like loving yourself and appreciating yourself when you don't feel so good when you lift, lift yourself up you don't feel when you feel bad so you can feel stronger again when you keep your agreements, as I mentioned, and you make that a priority, so when your agreements are made, they're important, they're kept, and they're fulfilled, so you then trust yourself. Self-trust supports self-respect, and respect then bleeds out into other relationships. Or it sounds a bit nasty, not bleeds. It um, overflows into other relationships, that sounds better. So my reminder to you is that the power to have self-respect is in your own hands. How you do that is up to you. Again, I recommend self-love, self-trust, keeping agreements, all those components, because they help to build that sense of trust in who you are. And when you look in the mirror, you know it's looking back. Because self-respect also is about knowing yourself. It's about really recognizing in the mirror when you look in the face, you look in the face in the mirror and you say, I know who you are and I trust that. That's a huge piece of self-respect. So play with those as a that, that's your homework by the way I didn't so I sprung it on you did invite you to do it but if you want to practice this these are things I recommend work on your agreement keeping and work on your self-love those two components will really raise the bar for your own self-support and your self-regard and self-respect which will change the way you interact with other people if you're in a relationship now that's not working for you this may be a, a way out actually not say so you should be getting out I don't want to advise one way or the other but if you're finding not getting the respect you deserve respecting yourself first opens the door for respect to come from somebody else. And in fact, when you do this, your relationship will change. Either you will find yourself leaving or you'll find your partner steps up to the bar as well, which is awesome, if that's what you want. So practice these skills in your own time. See how they work. Get back to me if you like. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I will leave some links in the comments for you to get some self-support st started with that. Two things in particular, my self-love meditation, the guided meditation, which I've talked about a lot, is a cornerstone of this work. When you practice self-love in the mirror, which I have this um, guided meditation I offer, it will help you get sustaining support for yourself every day so you create more self-respect and self-trust. That works as well. I also have a group course which I mentioned before which I'm launching. It's a new group coaching program called Coming Home to Yourself. That'll be in the comments as well because if you sign up for that, it'll help you get on the road towards self-support, self-respect and self-regard that you want to have. Third, I'll put a link in the comments to reach out to me to have a conversation because if you're having some issues around relationships and self-respect and all those different pieces, the link will be there for you to sign up for a complimentary clarity conversation with me. I'll throw the book in as well, as, as in the link, by the way. I'll put a link in the comments for the book, by the way, as well, just to give you that option. So there's four things. Um, but I want to hear from you, how that goes for you, how that works for you. Hi, Barbara. Nice to see you my broadcast. Um, I'm just signing off. I'm just finishing up, by the way. So definitely recommend going back and watch from the beginning. There'll be more useful tools along the way. Um, as I mentioned, this is my Facebook Live. I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. There's some around this video. There's a there's a couple of there's a three dot thing you can click on to get more information, and there's a an icon there. To, there's a, a choice there to slay, be notified next time I go live. If you want to follow my broadcast every day, if you want to, click on that link. So you click on that button, so it'll turn it on. So you'll see my broadcast when I go live every day. If you want to just set your watch or your phone to remind you, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page. Again, Barry Selby on Facebook is where you can find me. Those go live, you can interact with me there. The replays you can catch on my previous broadcasts. On my business page on Facebook, please like my page, which is barryselby.author. You can watch all the replays there. Alternatively, if you want to watch on YouTube, because some people like YouTube, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And by the way, it's, it's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, all one word. I hope this has made some sense to you. I hope this has reached out to you, and I hope you've got some value from this. This is always my intention with these talks to be inspirational, to be informative, and to ideally uplift you and get you in the direction you want to go. If you want to go deeper than just my broadcast, I'll leave you a link in the comments as I mentioned. And you can find your way through. I trust you can take care of yourself. I know you I know you can take care of yourself. So I'm reminded to you is to remember to do that because you may be forgetting. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will be back again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, that's about it. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.